What's up guys? I have arrived at the Atlantis in Reno. It's raining right now, it's wet, but it's gonna be a really fun week because it's the Run Good Poker Series inaugural tour stop here. And I'm an ambassador bounty, which means that you can knock me out in the bounty tournament and win a prize up to a thousand dollars in cash. But I plan to win that tournament and keep the bounty for myself. I have found Deb. We're wandering around the casino. We just ate lunch. Yes. We're trying to find Tana for the great buffalo hunt. <laughs> <laughs> True story. I have never in my life placed an actual sports bet at a live casino before. Don't know. But I might, I might do it now for the Warriors game one against the Lakers because I'm here. Why not? Why not? Here it is. I ended up doing a parlay because if I'm going to do it for the first time, I got to do it big, right? I got the Knicks, the Warriors, and the Stars. I think the Stars are hockey. I'm just doing what Tana told me to do, really. This is Jeff and Tana talking strategy on sports bets on the machine. Chop, chop, chop. Just, you know, this, <laughs> this always works out. You take big money line favorites and they always win. <laughs> so far, I got a free beer playing video slots with Deb. We both won a little bit. I won $32. I also watched Jeff Platt eat two sandwiches. And I'm about to go up to my room, get my stuff, and we're playing the 200 Bounty Tournament. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and it's a drinking event. Get in depth. <laughs> All right, so how many venues in the country do you get a window seat? when you're playing a poker tournament. This might be the only one. A winner until I'm not. This is what the bounty uh, gets. Oh, you're talking about All right. uh, Not much, but a little bit more of a winner than the woman to my right, your left. <laughs> Damn. Well, right now we're all winners. Let's see who could be the winner for the longest. Update. If I bust another bounty, I don't win his bounty. I become a double bounty. So He's I, talking about winning my bounty. Yeah, so when I bust Dan or when I bust Jeff, no I'll, I'll be worth three bounties. That's, that's a game changer right there. Buckle up your seatbelts for this first event because it is a crazy one with lots of action. It's an Ambassador Bounty Turbo event. So here we are, the hijack is open at 700, the cutoff calls. I'm gonna three bet this with Ace King in the small bind to 3.5K. It's like 40% of my stack. The hijack calls, we both check the nine high flop and then I turn the king, which is great. But I'm gonna slow play this and try to trap my opponent. Um, I check and they check back. So now the river is a three of hearts. Now I have to bet, but I'm gonna be kind of silly here because I am a bounty. I'm gonna leave 100 behind just to see what my opponent's gonna do. She can hero call me, but then she wouldn't get my bounty because I'm not all in. So after a long pink, she finally goes all in. And now because I'm a bounty, we have to wait for the floor to come and announce it. Do I show it now? I have Ace King. And right away you can see just how crazy this bounty actually makes the action. I'm having fun in this bounty tournament. Pretty much the whole table is drinking. We'll see how it goes once the once we get really short sack. I might just fold and knit up just to piss everyone off. Let me show you guys what I got going on. I got some uh, chicken nuggets. Got a couple of beers here. I really can't bust because I don't have enough hands to uh, carry all this stuff. It's still full. I'm down to 10 big blinds. I'm under the gun with Ace 8 suited. Normally I just jam this, but again, I'm gonna mix things up here to make things a little interesting and just keep one and a half big blinds behind. Uh, the middle position player who has a lot of chips isolate jams and I joke about folding here but I call. <laughs> no I'm not no I'm not no I'm not I have a ton of fold equity still I still have 1500 no you got me 
Oh, yeah, okay, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. I, I feel like diamonds are coming. Diamonds! 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 Oh, you mean got an announcer? Slow, 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 slow. Uh, slow, slow, slow. Make it the king of diamonds, too. Oh. Let's, Let's see what my bounty was worth. Oh, it's his utility bill! <laughs> oh! I f***ing said it! I called it! I f***ing said it! Oh! Alright, as expected, as I called it, I busted and I was worth the $1,000 bounty. I just had a feeling. I'm always the big bounty in every bounty tournament. I just, it's by luck. I don't know. Or maybe it's anti luck. All right, what, what the f are we doing right now, Haley? The backpack got stolen, so we're on a goose chase to this, this exact location. Oh we're about God. to pull up to the pepper mill where her backpack is. Me and Tanner and Haley are about to. We're about to f it so up. Dumb. <laughs> we did not find it. Second day in Reno, and today we have a two day deep stack ring event. I'm gonna try to win the ring this time because if you win a ring, you automatically qualify for the $1 million free roll at the end of the year, which is pretty cool. So that's the plan for today. We're in a 250 deep stack ring event here, and I am in the big blind with King Deuce suited. I'm going to defend my big blind against a low jack open and cut off call, and I'm going to flop bottom pair. I check it over, and the low jack puts in a continuation bet of 3k, and I just don't feel like his bet here is respecting my stack size. Because his board texture favors the big blind range here, and... I could be check raising a lot here. So sure, he could be nutted here with like aces or kings or over pair or something like that. But most of the time, I just don't think he is. I think he's over C betting in this spot and I take advantage of it and rip it and he snap folds. <laughs> this next hand, I'm gonna open under the gun plus two with about 20 big blinds here with ace jack off suit. I'm gonna get two callers from the cutoff and the big blind and I flop. Open ended with two overs here. I down bet to 1k. If I get raised here, I'm just putting it in. Uh, the cutoff calls and the turn is a three of clubs. I end up ripping it here. It's a little bit punty, but I should have a lot of live outs if I get called here. Unfortunately, I get snapped off by the stone cold nuts and I'm drawing to a chop. My second bullet gets off to a little bit better start. This hand's kind of an exciting one. Uh, I have pocket aces here in the small blind. Under the gun has me covered by 100 only. She goes all in and obviously I'm gonna call when it comes back to me. We're gonna be up against pocket kings and we both end up making a set, but my hand holds. Oh, holds. <laughs> oh. oh no. Oh, oh, oh. But the run good isn't gonna last for very long. Here I am getting it in pre-flop with ace king and I'm up against ace queen but I can't fade the queen. It comes right there in the window on the flop. It's finally time to try out this sushi spot that everyone's been talking about here on the terrace. I'm highly critical of sushi and all Japanese food in general because I am Japanese, but uh, I'll, I'll try it out. Taste-wise, was better than I expected, so, so yeah, it was not bad. Just fired four f in the 250. This is Taylor. Only two, <laughs> only two. Fuck.
<laughs> man, <laughs> fuck you. Dead. How many? Fuck you. Bagged. I'm back. All right, we're about to go find uh, Tana and the rest of the crew and do some Dejan shit. Found the crew at the arcade. We are about to play basketball. We're prop betting. Casino floor right now, Dijoning. I just made 200 on roulette. I hit my number twice, back to back hands. Let's go. Dude, I just hit a royal flush. <laughs> we have an update, day two of the hunt for the missing laptop backpack. It pinged and we called the cops and they're gonna meet us at a middle school somewhere. Let's go. Let's go. I always fucking wanted to be on Reno 911. Let's fucking go. Let's go. <laughs> Lieutenant Dango. <laughs> I just got two outered in the 200 one day ring event. I can still re-enter. I might, I might not, I'm not sure. I just made another 500 on video poker, so I think I'm gonna max late reg the 200 event and then play the 250 bounty tournament after that. Why not? Free rolling. <laughs> <laughs> After that gross bust out, here we are in the 250 bounty. I'm short stacked in the cutoff and I rip it with ace eight. I run it into Deb's aces and then Murphy's small blind ace king and here's what happens. I busted out of the bounty tournament. It was super fun, super splashy. I was super splashy. I got one and a half bounties, um, half because we chopped a pot, so I got $75, and uh, I'm gonna go play some video poker again. This is crazy, I just keep banking like four aces and keep running it up. It's day one of the main event here at Atlantis. It's been a long week, it's been really entertaining, but today I am focused, I haven't drank. I mostly spent all day in my hotel room just doing a little bit of editing and getting myself ready mentally. Let's go. It's been a rough week in poker so far and I'm looking to turn things around here in the main event. So I have pocket jacks under the gun plus one. I'm gonna open this up and get a three bet from the hijack and the button calls. So I decide to flat and we're gonna see a flop three way. It's nine high rainbow. I check and just check out this action on the flop. The hijack continues for 3K. The button calls again. I'm not gonna mess around here. I raise it up to 10k, the hijack folds, the button jams, I call, and we're up against pocket jacks. The turn and river don't matter as it is a chop pot and that's how this tournament gets started. This hand comes at the 800 big blind level. I'm in the cutoff with 15 big blinds. I'm gonna open this to 2k with king seven suited and the button's gonna call me. So we're gonna see a flop heads up and it comes out king high, but it's a pretty dry board. And I decided to check here. I don't wanna be betting here too often out of position cutoff versus button. Also, if I bet here, there aren't a lot of worse hands, I think, that are calling me. So I wanna allow him the opportunity to at least stab at it. So I check, he checks back. On the turn, I need to now bet for value. So I bet a small size. He calls, which means he could have an eight here or maybe a draw. It's a safe river card, so I go all in, almost with one to one st stack to pot size ratio. It's pretty polarized, it's probably either a king here or nothing. He goes into the tank for a very long time and then finally folds and tells me he folded an eight. He was thinking about calling with third pair. I'm gonna defend my big blind here with 20 big blinds deep with queen eight suited to get the button open. It's pretty standard here and we're gonna see a flop. 
which comes out 10-9 deuce. I have a backdoor flush draw and a gutter straight draw. I check and the button continues for 2.5k. I make the call here. I think it's also good to realize that there are a lot of good turn cards here that I could lead jam on, I think. Um, and the five is actually one of those cards because I have more two pair combos here in the big blind range than the bind does, I think. Plus, obviously, I have a lot of outs now with the flush and the straight draw and probably two live cards in a lot of cases. If I had two pairs here as well, I would make the same play because I don't want my opponent to check back and realize all his equity. Unfortunately, he has 10-3 of diamonds. And just like that, I'm back in firing my second bullet with 30 big blinds. And this is literally the second hand dealt to me on this second bullet. I raise with pocket nines. I get three bet. I four bet rip it. And this is actually a spot where I probably should have just called. But because it's the first starting flight of three, I decided to take more aggressive line and try to build up a stack or come back tomorrow. I'm not even putting the graphics up because this hand happened so fast but I was up against pocket queens and I did not improve and that is the end of my day one A. All right, All right. <laughs> this is the loser's lounge of the main event. We are terrible, so we're looking for trouble. We're gonna go find the buffalo hunt at Silver Legacy. And I haven't been to the row in Reno in a very long time, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> I just made my Buffalo debut. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I put in $100, I'm betting the minimum. I made like 800 bucks, I think, in like three spins. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> so I just hit 71 free spins on this, and this old dude comes by and says, holy shit, I've never seen that in my entire life. First time playing, you know. Wow. Um, I lost a little bit on video poker tonight, but then, damn, I ran hot in Buffalo's. Apparently, that's like record-breaking, career, like lifetime-breaking run good. And I did it on my first time ever. Beginner's luck, I guess. I should never play it again. Me and Jamie were looking for Haley and Tana, and then we get a message. We get a text message from Haley. Hey, I'm at Crafts. I just turned 2,000 to 14,000. Let's go! We have breaking news about the laptop. <laughs> I'm smiling. That's I good. That's good. How? In, so, I went on a wild chase yesterday looking for this thing. It pinged me to a park. I drove to the park. I was 20 minutes too late. While I'm leaving, I get another ping to an address two miles away, and I was like, God. This is the closest I'm gonna get to it in the quickest amount of time. And I drove there and it was an apartment building. Not helpful. I wake up this morning at 10 a.m. with a Facebook message request from the leasing manager at that apartment oh. building. And she said that a resident found it on his doorstep and turned it in. They went through some of my stuff, found my name, and they contacted me on Facebook. And it's a miracle. <laughs> So the story that we're going for with the vlog is that she got a ping on her laptop. She's like, Kyle, let's go knock on this fool's door. So I was like, I was like, yes. So we go to the doorstop. She opens the door and this dude opens the door. She kicks him in the nuts. Puts his head in a chokehold. Slaps his face into the wall. She's like, give me my laptop. And then I started to feel bad for the guy. He started to cry. But then he was like, yeah, yeah, it's, I took it, my bad. Here's the laptop. That's the story we're going with. Yeah. It's, 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 it's better like for the vlog. Black eyes, a broken wrist. Uh, I kicked him down the flight of stairs. I felt bad. Yeah, so. oh, I felt bad. Good morning. It is time for day 1B. There's also 1C at 6 p.m. today. So two chances to find a bag in this main event. Now in the previous hand, I had just made a pretty big fold um, on the turn with a flush and a straight draw combo. And that left me with half my stack. There's two limpers in this hand. I'm gonna raise to 3K from the cutoff. And then the small blind bet's enough to put me all in. So I call it, 
and it's not good. The pain is starting to build up. Here I am on my fourth bullet, and we have a five-way limped pot. I'm in the small blind with 5-4 suited, and I'm gonna flop an open-ended straight draw. It's gonna check around to the button, who happens to be my friend Conrad from earlier. He makes a small bet of 1.5K. I make the call, and then the turn is a six, which I think is better for my range. He only has about seven or eight K, plus I wanna make sure that I realize all my equity, so I put him all in. He now goes into the tank, and this is where it gets kind of funny. Just listen in to what he has to say. Oh, you have four or five. I sure do. But you know what? You have queen high. And if you call me off, I'm for sure going to hit the deuce. Or maybe a seven. Whatever, show me four or five. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Got him. I could have her run in one or two. I'm not super happy with how I played this hand. I don't think it's terrible how I played it, but I think I could have played it better. So we're going to join this hand on the flop here. It was a multi-way pot again. I'm on the button with 7-5 suited, and I flop a straight and flush draw. The low jack, who is the pre-flop aggressor, puts in a 4.5k continuation bet, which is on the larger side. I'm thinking it's very likely that he could actually have an overpair in this spot. But I take an aggressive line and go all in um, for max pressure with my combo draw. If he has an overpair or even if he has the 9, it's pretty close to 50-50 here. However, the reason why I don't like my play is because he's representing an overpair, in which case I really don't have much fold equity at all if that's the case because he's not folding an overpair. So I think the better play here is to actually just call and peel the turn and reevaluate. I haven't won shit in poker on this trip. Debating if I should go back and play another uh, another bullet. I will, but I'm gonna grind some cash first. Well, I booked a small win in the one-two no limit cash game. I'm gonna grab something to eat, and then I'm going to register for the 6 p.m. flight to fire my fifth freaking bullet in this main event. Let's hope it's the one. That was tasty. I guess it was happy hour, so it was like half off, so it only came out to $22 too, which is pretty good. You know what, I just honestly wasn't in the mood to record the early levels for the fifth time again in the same tournament, so I didn't have the camera rolling, but this is what happens at the 300-600 level. The button opens 4x off a of 40k stack. I wake up with pocket aces in the small blind, I 3-bet to 6k, he calls, the flop comes out 8 high, I put in a c-bet, I size it about 30% of the pot because I want him to float me with all his overcards still, and... He just rips it, 34K, with 5-3 offsuit, I snap call, I do not win the pot. He hits the deuce on the river and that leaves me with 2K left and I don't recover. I am so done with the main event. I am so bad at poker, but this is my fifth night on the DGEN tour and I'm starting to get really good at slots. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these DGENs. <laughs> So now it just spins or what? So you get to make all the Oh. Do we get millions? 95? That seems like a really good offer. That seems like a good offer. But you can't take a first one. Fishy. Try again. How many offers do you get? So you got 95 there. 135? Yeah, we gotta take that. Does it show you what the third one will demand? Wow, that's pretty good. That's fishy. Alright, switch to my sports bar back for the day. Take picture of that. It 
It's day six here in Reno, and it's the last day of this Run Good series at the Atlantis. We got a $400 buy-in, $100 bounty tournament. It should be a fun one, and it's for a ring. Let's go. This is the final event of the series that I'm playing. It's a bounty event, $100 bounties. And we have two limpers already. The small blind raises it up to 1K, which is a very small sizing, especially when there's two limpers and when you're out of position. But I like it. I'm definitely gonna three bet it to 4K. He calls, we are heads up to the flop, which comes out jack high. And now he leads 5K out of position. This is highly unusual, very strange. If we were deeper, I would just flat here and let him hang himself. I do have the queen of diamonds, which is great defense if another diamond comes on the turn. But because there is a bounty involved, I think he's more likely to call me. I don't think he's folding after making this size bet with my stack size. So I put it all in. He goes into a tank. I think he's in the tank because he realized what a bad spot he put himself into by leading out of position here. And he's gonna have to call with ace jack. I'm a 75% favorite, and here's what happens. I got one over, Cam. There it is. And my next bullet doesn't last long. It's a limp pot. I'm in the big blind. I flop the flush draw. We get it in versus top pair. I miss my draw again. That's kind of been the story of the week. Missing my draws, not fading the draws. And that's that. I am done with Reno. I got completely wrecked out here. I'm going home. Goodbye.